Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Team Therapy. He's the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda. (laughs) Hello, David, and welcome everyone across the country and around the world. This is the Feeling Good Podcast, episode 355, and we also have... Our, our most marvelous guest, Matt May, with us. We're, this is going to be an Ask David podcast, maybe, hopefully. Hey, Rhonda. <laughs> hey. And we also have two very, very special guests who are coming to this podcast from the United Kingdom. Andy Person, who is a team therapist, who does um, outside walking therapy, and he can talk about that a little bit about what he does. And we also have Tanya Ahern, who was once a family doctor general practitioner in the UK until she switched her practice around completely to become an extraordinary team therapist. So welcome, Andy and Tanya. Thank Hi, you. Great to be great, here. Great to see you. Lovely to meet you all. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know that you're part of the planning committee for the the Bristol team intensive that's scheduled in the United Kingdom from August 14th to 17th. So we want you to tell us some of the details about what that exciting conference will include. Yeah, I know we're extremely excited. We've got um, we've got some amazing uh, trainers coming along. Um, and it's based in Bristol, which Tanya and I are both a little bit biased because we both live here, but it is an incredible city. Um, great place to visit, and um, we've got a number of of great trainers. I say we've we've got uh, Lee Harrington and Heather Clegg. We've got Mike Christensen, Dipti Joshi, and there's um, some guy called David something or other who's going to be doing some uh, <laughs> some work with us as well. Going to have yeah, the, the great Doctor Doctor Burns is going to be doing some uh, virtual uh, remote work, um, doing some live therapy and uh, doing some question and answers. Tanya, do you want to say a little bit more about uh, what's going to be going on? Yeah, I'm just trying to think. We <clears throat> missed out anyone, but um, we've got. Uh, I, I've met him a few times. Is Maritz? Is that who you say his name? Um, Marius. Marius. Yeah. Marius. Um, Marius. Thank you. Who who seems fantastic from the few Zoom Marius Verga. sessions we've had. Thank you. And and of course, you've got Sterling Morey as well making an appearance. Oh, Marius. Sterling, that's going to uh, put you over the top for sure. He is. Uh, I was waiting for your smile there, David. I thought that would yeah. that would put a smile on your face. <laughs> yeah, sure. And if people are interested in coming to the Bristol UK intensive, what do they need to do? Well, we've got a uh, a website which is teamcbt.uk, T-E-A-M-C-B-T dot UK. Um, and if they go there, they're all the details are on there. They'll be able to. Uh, register through that website and um, there's also accommodation available uh, the the conference is happening at wills hall which is a, a beautiful old um it's a university building and there's accommodation university accommodation available to, to book if they want that as well and if someone books if, um, if someone comes to the intensive do they have classes to choose from or do they go to all of the classes that are being taught so it's a four-day um, masterclass or workshop, and um, yeah, we, we encourage everyone to come to all of them. We'll go through all the steps in team, and there'll be plenty of practice opportunities. There's a, a real focus on having the opportunity to to really try team out and uh, put it into practice. What, and what kind of, of things days, could would I learn if I come? Like I'm I'm sitting here in Germany or France or wherever, London, and I'm thinking about this. What 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 would I g- gain from from this? I mean, I've already heard a little about cognitive therapy. Is this just kind of more of the same? Absolutely not. No, we're using this marvelous approach, um, the the team framework. So we really will explore all elements, doing the sort of testing to understand the value of just really 
finding out what patients really feel about the sessions and really to enhance that sort of empathic, um, you know, sort of collaborative uh, um, approach and a lot of a lot of opportunity to practice the empathy skills um, that you've wonderfully, um, you know, so with, with Sterling Mori as well, he's, he's going to really uh, sort of demonstrate just by being there these incredible skills that will will give plenty of um, time for people to practice, along with understanding how resistance can really play a big part. And so we'll be doing a lot on um, sort of looking at the motivational part of outcome and process resistance. Um, and each day really takes one uh, you know, part of team. So on the last day, we'll be doing methods and looking at the fantastic toolkit and you know, just giving plenty of opportunities, as I said, to practice. Um, this 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 framework. I've, I've I've heard that team CBT therapists try to get really ultra fast change in in patients, uh, and but I've always been taught that genuine change takes many years or or ten years or more. Aren't these fast changes that you're saying just kind of a superficial flash in the pan? Do it. That well, I'd, I'd, have to, <laughs> I'd have to argue against that. Having uh, yeah. I, I discovered Team CBT uh, as I was setting up my own practice too. I do this walk and talk therapy uh, on the Downs in Bristol, and um, it's yeah, it could totally totally revolutionise the work that I've been doing. I I find it a really effective way of working, and and I'd say from my experience, the, the term the, the the effects are long lasting. People do find really. Yeah, significant change in a, in a short amount of time. Um, uh, oh, Andy's breaking I, up. I just love doing it. <coughs> yeah, equally. I mean, I, I've been a CBT oh, therapist. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Andy. Was there more? Yeah, go on. <laughs> We've got you again. I was <laughs> just filling in the gap there. <laughs> That's okay, Tanya, you take over. Yeah. Well, just I've been a CBT therapist for about sort of 11 years before I was introduced to team and I've just found it really has transformed my practice and I look back now on those patients I got a bit stuck you know well, we got stuck in the process and and it was it was really the A was the linchpin for me just understanding the assessment of resistance that's been just super powerful and I found it's really really enhanced sort of outcomes for me. I don't know if I'm really turbocharged yet. I, I still feel I'm learning so much, but I'm you know, definitely found it, it's really, really had quite a dramatic effect on outcomes. So several things I might learn is uh, some better ways to uh, test and assess patients to find out how they feel, how they feel about the therapist in the here and now to track changes from the start to the end of sessions. Learn from the great empathy master, Sterling Morey, who's a fant fantastically tender and empathic person, learns mm -hmm. some of the secrets of, of genuine, powerful empathy. And, and then if I'm having patients who are stuck and who, who doesn't have a lot of patients like, like that, mm -hmm. I'll find out why they're stuck, what I'm doing that keeps them stuck, and what I can do to get them unstuck so they can so they can can recover. Is, is that some of the things I might be learning at this intensive? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, also seeing where they are in that in that process of change as well, just why things are stuck, and yeah, some some really powerful ways to bring that resistance into the room, and and then be able to, as you say, explore and find ways that can help them sort of feel unstuck if that's what they want to do. Well, it sounds like um, a great we'll also, conference. Yeah, go ahead. I'll shut up. I, I, I was going to say, we'll also be looking at some of the methods as well and, and teaching some of, the, some of the key methods and the uncovering methods like downward arrow and uh, the to, to gut level for people. Um, and we'll be looking at relapse and, and how to work with relapse at some um, is, is likely to happen for people and, and enable them to to really become their own therapist. Um, and it, it's a good to say also anybody who attends the conference will be getting, um, they'll, they'll get certification points so that if you come by the end, you'll have enough points to become a, a certified level one team therapist. 
And if you're already, already level one, you'd be able to become a level two therapist. So Andy, your, your, your sound isn't isn't really hear, hearable, but can you summarize uh, that yeah. for, for us, uh, uh, so Rhonda? You, so you're saying that you're going to be using you're going to be teaching some one of some of the key team methods, which I will, I don't need to name. You can just come to the con, con, come to the team intensive and find out what they are. But the key methods in team you're going to be teaching those. You're going to be teaching relapse prevention which is a critical part of team therapy and moving people along to become their own therapist so that they don't need to be in therapy for the rest of their lives. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly that's, it. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll be there. And I'll be doing a, uh, <laughs> give, be giving a keynote uh, talk. I'll be doing a Q&A session, which is one of my favorite things to do. Um, are you going to be there, Rhonda? I am not. Oh, okay. You're not going to be there virtually either. No. Oh, okay. But you are uh, going to be doing personal work with one of the group. Yeah, with with Mike, right? Or with part. Yeah, some one of the participants in the intensive will have the, um, the good fortune of working with you, and your co therapist will be Mike Christensen, who's a really marvelous, empathic team therapist. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. So hope we can see you there, in Bristol, the fantastic city of Bristol, in August. And that's August fourteenth to the seventeenth. And there's plenty of opportunities right. for relaxing before and after. And if I want to find out more, I'm going to go to Team CBT. That's one word, dot UK. Fantastic. That's it. All yeah. right. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us and Thanks. letting us all know. Thanks so much uh, indeed for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, I'm so excited to hear about, about the meeting in, in Bristol coming up in August with the website teamcbt.uk if you if you want to attend. And then I'm also hearing pretty awesome news about upcoming meetings in Mexico, in India, and there have been two recent conferences focused on training and learning Team CBT in, in Warsaw, uh, Poland. And I'm, I'm interested how you're feeling about teams spreading around the globe, uh, David. Well, I, th I think it's really cool and uh, I, uh, I've, I've been so proud of all the the uh, people from the U.S. who are going abroad to to speak in these intensives around the world, and including you, Matt. And I, I know Rhonda, you've been the spark plug behind maybe all of this, or certainly most of it, if not all of it. And it is exciting. Uh, but another exciting thing was the uh, thing we recorded last. Uh, last week, uh, and so it's probably the podcast you heard a week ago, if you're a weekly listener, that uh, what's exciting me at least as much as that is the development of self-help groups, free groups that people can attend to learn various aspects of the team model, practicing the five secrets of effective communication, practicing the daily mood log, pra practicing how to fill out the different steps on the daily mood log and how to positively reframe and identify distortions and crush negative thoughts. I've, I've been wanting that uh, for, for at least since like the ni late 1980s when I was beginning to think about writing the book 10 Days to Self-Esteem, which is you can get on Amazon. It's intended to be a, a tool uh, for people who want to form self-help groups based on the, the Team CBT model. And I think it's fantastic because a lot of people can't get the help they want from their therapist or can't afford a therapist and uh, or, or, or need more than the help they're getting from a therapist and then th this gives you chances to to practice with with like-minded people and, uh, and and really master some of these these techniques i just think it's a, a fantastically welcome development plus book clubs springing up on my book uh, feeling great and and there's a when panic attacks uh, book club and, and 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 stuff like that i'm glad it's it's spreading we're doing good research studies on the feeling good app showing very promising results and that, those are kind of like outcome studies even without a human therapist but we need some outcome studies with human therapists as well to really put team cbt on the map it's so exciting to be you know, a small part of the revolution that's occurring in psychotherapy. 
uh, you know, in my training, I uh, learned about many different types of psychotherapy, but team CBT is just light years ahead. And I think is destined to kind of take over the main stage in helping people rapidly and sustainably overcome anxiety, depression, addiction, and relationship problems. Um, so thank you, David, uh, for making yeah. this possible. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, it, you know, you've created this culture of giving back. So you've, we talked last week about all of the people who are creating free trainings, you know, you know, lay people. Yeah, you know, you've you've provided your free training on Tuesday evenings. Matt and Jacob Lowry provide a free training on Mondays in person at Stanford. Richard Lamb and I provide free training on Wednesdays, which is, you know, geared toward an international group. And some of the trainings that we've done around the world, like we did two in Warsaw, one was, you know, just that, you know, that Matt was there too, and it was a fantastic um, intensive. The, the the second intensive, we were really training trainers who are now going to be in the first line of, you know, going out throughout the countries of Poland and Ukraine um, to train other team therapists. So, so it, it's continuing along. And, you know, Andy and Tanya didn't mention that in the UK intensive, not only are they having people from the United States and Canada come teach, but they're having people from the UK who have been dedicated to learning team and you know, coming up the ranks of certification so that they're at a level three or a level four. So they are also, you know, we're passing the baton. So it's not just Americans and Canadians that are doing the teaching, but people, um, you know, from their own countries and their own cultures. I know in Mexico City, that will be true. And in India, that will also be true. That's so that's so neat. Peter Spurrier, I know, is uh, one of the uh, the gang leaders there in uh, in Britain and he is such a neat person and so, so so loving and so brilliant and so so gifted mm -hmm. well let's get on with our topic for today we have two exciting topics around the interpersonal model and the interpersonal model is quite radically different from the uh, model for treating d depression and anxiety it's a completely different uh, uh, th theory of causality and completely different uh, treatment type uh, uh, t t techniques. And uh, Matt, I think you you had suggested we might spend part of today's podcast on what we call the paradoxical invitation. And I would say this is one of the uh, two or three most difficult techniques for therapists to, to learn because it just uh, goes against human nature and, and the natural tendency that we all have to try to help someone who's, uh, who's feel, feeling stuck. And you actually have to, to go in kind of the opposite direction when you use the paradoxical invitation. Do you want to tell us a little bit how, how it works? And then we could perhaps de demonstrate it showing one of the, the exercises we've created to help therapists learn how to, how to use the paradoxical invitation. I would say also that this is something that the general public c can use, like if you're interacting with a friend who starts complaining about somebody they're not getting along with, that that's a perfect time to use what we call the paradoxical invitation. But Matt, turn us on to invitations, straightforward and paradoxical, and, and why the paradoxical one is so vitally important and so very difficult to learn. <laughs> Thank you, David. I'm 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 nervous. I hope I, I address that topic well. Um, right. So the, the in contrast to the paradoxical invitation, there's a straightforward invitation that we would employ um, after offering a lot of empathy uh, when we get the sense that, that that the person is feeling very heard and understood for a problem that they're very likely to want help with. So for anxiety or depression. We might just say, you know, would you want some help now uh, with that one of these problems, the anxiety you're feeling or the depression, uh, uh, or would you want more empathy? That that would be a very straightforward invitation. But there are other so problems. Let's just summarize yeah. that to make that crystal clear, because it seems real obvious to us, but someone listening might go in one ear and out the other. But you know, at the at the beginning of a therapy session, we, uh, you know, I would 
typically, I don't know how long you spend, Rhonda or, or, or Matt, but typically spend 20 or 30 minutes empathizing with the patient. And I never try to do anything to help until I get an A on empathy. And, and, and during the empathy phase, I just want to reflect back what the patient's saying and acknowledge how, how they're likely to be feeling and, and give them a sense of acceptance. But there's no helping and no advice. And then at some point, we want to see now, is there something that you want to work on in today's session, or do you need more time to kind of talk? Uh, because if you're if you're ready, you know I, I'm ready, and if you need more time to talk, that that's great too. And that's called the straightforward invitation. Because uh, and you do that with patients who are struggling primarily with depression and anxiety, uh, with patients who are cooperative and, and 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 motivated, and usually they say, "No, I'm ready to get." To work, and then we go into the uh, positive reframing and magic button, and all of those kinds of of techniques to to reduce the resistance people have to get rid of depression and anxiety. But if the patient's been talking about a relationship problem, uh, or if the patient seems kind of ornery and oppositional, then we we can't use that. We, we're going to use the paradoxical invitation. And now back to you, Matt. Great, thank you, David. That that really helped fill in some of the the details there, and uh, yeah, and so the paradoxical invitation is useful uh, when we sense that there will be resistance, um, either because the problem is based in a relationship, and we understand uh, in the interpersonal model that the cause of all relationship problems is blame, and people don't want to give up uh, blame. Uh, blame is kind of an addictive substance in a in a way. And similarly, if they're struggling with a habit or an addiction, uh, they wouldn't, for different, different reasons, want to give up a habit or addiction, or they may just be in a state of mind. Uh, sometimes parents will call me uh, wanting me to treat their child, but the child isn't calling me. And, and so my sense is that the, the child is kind of being pushed by their parent uh, rather than seeking therapy on their own. And, and so I would use a paradoxical invitation step. So Matt, uh, are you saying there's a patients. level of ambivalence with these patients that they may or may not want to change or put the work in? Exactly, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's an almost um, intrinsic feature of resistance for when it comes to relationship problems and, and habits and addictions. Yeah, they're ambivalent <clears throat> at best, I would say. At best, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that there's uh, often clenched teeth and anger in relationship problems. And they may be telling you about someone they don't get along with just so you'll collude with them and agree with them that, that there, there, there's a high likelihood that they're, that they're not asking for help. Right. And, and so if we use the straightforward invitation there, it'll sound like we're rejecting them, that we're telling them that they're the problem and that they need to do the changing and they'll they'll dig in their heels even harder at that point. And so the uh, you invented the paradoxical invitation step to get beneath the resistance and to be a step behind the patient rather than trying to force the patient, which always creates resistance. Um, well, how how do, how does this how does this work? What would be an example of of a bad if I've got a patient here who's whining and complaining about? life in general or people in general or my partner or, you know, some person I'm, I'm ticked off at. Uh, and then uh, how, what, what would be a paradoxical invitation? Uh, so there's several different components of it. Uh, so one would be uh, a carrot and, and to highlight what we have to offer that's uh, powerful and appealing to them, uh, potentially, uh, which would be to feel, have a, have a resolution of the conflict that they're in, to feel more at peace or closer with this person, um, to, to feel more joyful and happy in the context of this relationship. Uh, and, uh, and then also to acknowledge the resistance uh, that they're going to feel and how unfair it is that they should have to be in therapy working on this relationship when the other person is treating them so badly uh, and, and to have open hands as well, that this is 
probably something that they don't want to work on and wouldn't want my help with. And that there would be a lot of other things that I could help them with if, if they uh, want to focus on something else. That the relationship problem is likely not something that would be appealing to them to work on. Uh, so that would be the, the three basic elements, something enticing, a carrot, uh, acknowledging the reasons they would not want uh, my help on this problem. When the other person is doing all this stuff, why would they want my help to get closer to this person who's hurting them? And, and then uh, open hands, letting go of that agenda. So in general, in team, we always start with empathy. And then we move into the, that's the E equals empathy, and the A equals assessment of resistance, where we deal with motivation and resistance before trying to help someone with actual methods. Right. And, and we don't go into methods until we've, we're convinced that, that the resistance has, has been dr drastically reduced. But the method... The, the invitation when you're inviting the patient to move from empathy into the next phase of the treatment, that's the invitation step. And the straightforward and the paradoxical are radically di different f f from each other. So what kind of things would you, would you, would, would you say to me uh, using the, the, the paradoxical invitation? And then once you've described it, we can maybe do a little uh, role play uh, exercise and, and demonstrate how, how that works. Uh, yeah. So hypothetically, David, if you were experiencing a relationship problem and you were talking about it with me, I'd offer you a lot of empathy. I'd check in to see how well I'm doing at understanding you. And if you were saying, great, I, you're really getting me, Matt, then I would say, well, gosh, I've got, got more to offer. If you'd be interested, if, if you've taught me a lot of powerful tools that that I could offer you to, to help resolve this conflict that you're in and help, help you feel a lot closer and more at peace in, in this relationship. But I'm imagining that wouldn't be appealing to you, uh, given how this other person has been treating you. It seems unfair that you should have to do work to get closer to them when they're, they're the one who's causing the problem and hurting you. Uh, and, and, and so there's my, my guess is this is not a problem that we should be focused on in our work together it would be a lot, lot more I could be helping you with instead of this. You could give me a grade on that. Oh, um, I, what do you think, Rhonda? Oh, I'd give that an A plus. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Why would that be, Rhonda, an A plus? Well, it's really easy to be a bit condescending in the paradoxical invitation or to be somewhat, I mean, even a little belittling without intending to. And, and Matt, I loved how you said, you know, you, you would give a lot of empathy and then you, you have powerful tools to resolve the conflict, you, to help you feel closer, to feel joyful. I mean, those are all like, yeah, I want to do, I want, I mean, just listening to you is like, yeah, that's what I want. Um, but then when you said, you know, you could imagine not wanting to do that since the other person is someone who has hurt, hurt you. I just felt that even that line alone made me feel like you really, really, really understood me. And when you said that, imagine there are other things that we could work on. It was, it was, um, you know, I just felt so accepted and warm that you would give me other options that you're not just like kind of dumping me like, Oh, you don't want to work on this. Okay. Well, bye. Therapy's terminated, but you're giving me other options. So it just feels like very, you know, just like warm and, and, you know, I know it's kind of held by you. Cool. Now the listeners are saying, oh, that sounds so easy there. There's nothing to that. This is a dopey podcast <laughs> and it probably is, but <laughs> regardless of that fact, uh, it's, it's actually very tough to learn how to do. And, and we'll do a little uh, example to, to show you that, um, but it's, it's highly desirable it, to my way of thinking, because you don't get in a power struggle, either the person will then try to talk you into, I really do want to work on my relationship with my wife or my partner or whatever, or no, I don't want to work on that relationship. And then you can 
say, okay, maybe there's something else we could work on together. And you don't have to get into uh, a fight with, with with your patient or with your son or daughter or friend who who might be complaining to you about their relationship with with a you know boyfriend or a friend from school or or with with their parent or or what whatever it happens to be. Now I'm wondering, Rhonda, would would you want to be the uh, the the whiny patient or would you want to be the shrink and and try the technique and maybe Matt could be the whiny complainy patient. Okay, I'll be That's- the Matt can be the whiny patient. That's Great. where I really shine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. And and so and the specific instruction is Matt will just be as obnoxious and whiny and com- blamey and complainy as possible for you know a minute or t- or so uh, talking about whatever he wants to talk about. But it you know all the people who done him wrong or. The one person who's doing him wrong, or or whatever it happens to be, and then when when he's done, you Rondo will say empathy, 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 and that's a little code word for uh, I've just spent you know thirty or forty minutes skillfully empathizing with you, uh, and 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 then and issue your paradoxical invitation step. Okay. So for the people who are listening, we're skipping empathy, but we would not skip empathy in an actual therapy session, but we're trying to highlight the paradoxical invitation step. So that's why we'll just say empathy, 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 and then issue the invitation. So are you ready, Matt? Uh, Yeah, it sounds like I just get to be myself. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're your darker angel uh, to, uh, on this one. You ready, Rhonda? I am ready. Okay. My heart's racing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Matt. Okay. You know, Doc, I just can't take it any anymore. The other day, I, I came home after a long day of work. I'd, I'd worked a double shift. And I just worked so hard to support my family. And then I get home and the lights are out. And there's a cold plate of food on the table, and 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 my my wife's already asleep. She doesn't even greet me, and I have to eat this crap that she's just thrown on the table, and, and uh, it's just obvious to me she doesn't give a crap about me, and I'm the one doing all the work around here. Uh, it's it's um this is just you know she's just the the worst wife ever. She never does anything for me, and I have to do everything around the house, uh, and, and uh, I'm just sick and tired of it. I can't take, take this anymore. I'm not going to keep doing this crap. I can't think of anything else. Matt, empathy, empathy, empathy. Wow. Um, Matt, I have... Um, you know, I just you, do a brief empathy summary now just to, to okay you know. yeah that feels good well Matt you know you came home from a really long day doing a double shift and you were working so hard to support your family you know you said you do everything you do all the work around the house you have the worst wife ever she doesn't care about you you come home this one day when you did a double shift the lights are out there's a cold plate of food on the table your wife is asleep she's not even awake enough to greet you and it's really obvious in that moment that she doesn't give a crap about you and it you just feel really done am i getting that right i get that an a plus oh okay well, so you're feeling like I really understand you? Yeah, just go ahead with it. That's yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So you know what, Matt? I have a lot of really powerful tools to help you resolve the conflict you're in with your wife and to help you, you know, feel closer to her and to feel joy and, and um, you know, really experience intimacy in this relationship. But I'm really imagining that that's not something that you want to do. Since your wife is someone who's who's really hurt you, and your wife, you know, is showing you that she doesn't give a crap and she's the worst wife ever and she doesn't do anything for you and you have to do everything around the house. And, um, you know, and she's doing nothing. And so I'm I'm wondering if, so she has been so withdrawn from the relationship and not giving you what you need and not giving you a crap. 
you know, I can imagine that any of the powerful tools I have are not some things that are going to be really things that you want to do. And I can totally understand that you're probably not going to want my help or my to change because it's your wife who doesn't give a crap. And I'm thinking that maybe we shouldn't include working on your relationship with your wife in our, in our goals or in therapy. Um, and I'm wondering, what do you, what do you think? Is there, I imagine there are other things that you'd want to work on and I would love to hear what they are so that we can dive in and reach your goals in therapy. <laughs> well, I'd also, I'd also give that an A plus Rhonda. Really? I yeah. I thought I... it was better. I thought it was better than my example. No way. I repeated myself too much. Oh, I just ate it all up. I, I was really loving the paradox. I was loving uh, that little uh, carrot. Felt like, oh, that's exciting. And then when you pulled it back, I wanted it even more. Uh, like when you said, I, I'm imagining this isn't something that you'd want uh, my help with. That's when I wanted to go for it. Because oh, I, tr- oh. I, trusted, I trusted you and I thought, like, there's, there's something here. and I, maybe, maybe you could help me. Cool. Actually, you didn't Matt, ask for my feedback. What is your feedback, David? <laughs> <laughs> of course, your, your feedback. <laughs> I was incredibly disappointed oh. in your response, Rhonda. Okay. Because I also gave you an A+. Plus. Oh, thank you. And I was you, counting yay. on you my to, first to screw it up in the way that every other therapist will, would screw it up. But you were you were really great. You did a beautiful job with, with that. Uh, well, uh, I actually, I have to give credit both to you, David, because this isn't the first time we've talked about this, and you've talked about this in the Tuesday group lots, but I also have to give credit to Matt because I learned this technique in exquisite detail in your consultation group that you did with Daniel Minty. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad that stuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you do a, the paradoxical invitation, and and you can also you don't have to be a a therapist. Uh, like if you just have a a, a friend c- c- complaining uh, and and whining, there's a tendency to want to jump in and help that person or give them some advice. But I, 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 there's rarely, if ever, any mileage in, in that. And uh, the the best way to respond is is just with with empathy, you know, uh, thought empathy, f- f- feeling empathy, and inquiry, disarming, st- stroking, just some kindly I feel statements. That's almost people who are complaining want for, from others, whether it's your your child who's who's upset at high school and doesn't like what's going on or feels lonely or unpopular. Or, or depressed, or 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 or, or whatever, uh, or, or or a friend, uh, and 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 maybe we, and, and and in that case, you often don't even have to do a paradoxical invitation, but but simply just do some, you know, world world class empathy, and we we could demonstrate that too. I think that would be a good demo for our podcast listeners because who who doesn't know someone at, at some point or another who's who, who's whining and complaining about politics and the the, the stupid people and the uh, other party and you know or, or you know c- whining and and and, and complaining uh, like I could try whining and complaining if someone would like to be the uh, you know re- respond with you know just just the five secrets without trying to help or give advice. I'd be happy to fail at that. I think I won't disappoint you, David. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, let's say I'll try to get into my whiny self. Uh, you, you know, I get so pissed off at the people in the stupid blah 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 party. They're they're they're, they're just they they don't know what they're talking to, about. They 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 believe a lot of bullshit that isn't true, and they're they're just a bunch of. Uh, Let's see. Woke, 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 wokes. They're all into wokeism, and it's it's just bullshit. It, there, it's you know you gotta stick up for things, you know, in, in in this world, and not be such a a wilting lily wokeocrat. And but uh, you know, it, it, people in my life are are just 
basically full of shit and anyway uh, you know no 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 one listens no 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 one cares everyone's kind of on, on the on the take believing bullshit the the world's going to hell in a handbasket that that's 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 my point of view and all this shit about global warming who could believe that shit just because it's a little on the warm side today doesn't mean crap it's always hot in the summer Yeah, I'm, I'm, that was that was great, David. <laughs> yeah, that was really great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David, I, I'm right there with you. I'm I'm pissed off too. There's so many stupid people in that blah 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 party, and they're just believing all kinds of bullshit and wokeism, and um, they they don't really know what they're they're talking about. They're just buying into stuff without thinking critically about it. And it's scary to see the world go into hell in a handbasket the way it has been. And I'm just admiring so much how you care about the future and and you're you're not one of these wilting lilies. I see you as quite strong and powerful and standing up for what's right here uh, and, and sticking up for yourself and others too. I'm really glad you're talking about this. I wonder what it's been like for you. Are you feeling kind of pissed off and angry with the way things are going okay what grade would you give that yourself <laughs> i have no idea um I'll give it a b how about you Rhonda? well i'm getting a reputation for getting for being a realistic <laughs> grade giver but i would give that an a plus i was amazed at how um much you could relate to, and the thought empathy was amazing you did a really great job of stroking. You asked him for more information and could identify some of the feelings he was having and that you were having. So, Right. I, yeah. yeah, I thought it was excellent, too. Now, a lot of people uh, will not respond like that. What, what do we tell ourselves that, that keeps us from responding in that elegant way do you, do you see you say you, you might tell let, let's take turns coming up with excuses not to do that i don't want to respond like that because i think it's important to stand up for the truth and this person's clearly got a biased view of things and i'm going to point it out to them would, would that be a good one yeah that'd be a good one truth and I mean, honesty yeah truth yeah truth uh-huh i mean i can think of reason i don't want to get into a conflict so i'm going to withdraw and not say anything yeah. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Con conflict phobia. I like. I like to feel powerful, like I'm right and they're wrong. So it, yeah, I, yeah. I want to point out theirs and their thinking. Yeah, I want. I want to feel. Uh, you know, feel powerful. Uh, m morally superior. Uh, uh. And 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 what would you say then, Matt, to, to the person says, I, I don't want to respond the way you you did that. That just W wimpy nonsense <laughs> yeah it is kind of wimpy nonsense I, I i don't think you should respond the way that i'm responding i just admire your honesty and your your truthfulness and um yeah maybe there's some other topic that we could uh, talk about that you'd want want my help with yeah right and that's the paradoxical paradoxical invitation again well i don't know do you think this will connect with anybody any of our listeners or I really? think so. And Matt, I have to say, I really admire your incredible ability for stroking in these very challenging situations. I admire your ability. I'm I'm feeling very stroked right now as well, Rhonda. <laughs> <Yeah>. but, <laughs> but you're easy to stroke because you're so down. It's not easy to stroke David when he's talking about the stupid blah, blah party and the this and the that and the BS. And yet you you were able to. Oh, and even watching. the second part, you were able to. Well, let's play a game here since we're into this. Um, the uh, could could you be impossible impossible to to stroke, Rhonda? Just just be the most awful person you can be, and then uh, Matt and I will will both have to make a, a disarming and stroking comment, and then you can grade us. Wait. Um. You just do you, you th think you can be like a person who's so awful that we couldn't possibly agree with what you're saying, and we couldn't possibly say something ad admiring and, and okay. flattering? 
you know, okay, I'm looking at you guys and you probably don't know as much about alcoholism as I do. And I'm noticing that you both have these alcoholic noses that's like a bulbous and the skin, your skin is really gross and ugly and veins are popping out and, and, um, you're really alcoholics. And I, I choose not to spend a lot of time with people who drink. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a really healthy, clean living and drinking person. I usually drink water, or maybe green tea and being around you is kind of just like, you know, rubbing, you know, it's like contagiously like a leper. And, um, I'm also thinking that I don't want your influence around my, anybody that I, I'm, anyone else I'm with. I, I don't, I don't want my family to know you or, and, and, you know, I don't also, I don't like the tone of your voice when you speak. It's kind of squeaky and it's hard to listen to. And, and your haircuts are, you know, I, I th- I, you know, I think you guys need to go to a, a, a more upgraded, more current barber or, you know, more fashionable because you're so out of date in the way that you look and it's really important how you present yourself. Not that you care. I, I want to go first on this one. Well, uh, one thing like oh this, could, this guy, <laughs> this Which could I'd be like an to say opp- I made all that up. <laughs> well, <laughs> this, this could be an opportunity to challenge the listeners too, to see if they can find a way to disarm and see the truth. If they were receiving this type of criticism, what, what could they say? Uh, to disarm okay why don't why don't you uh just turn off your podcast unless you're out walking in which case you can just keep listening or just turn it off and and ask yourself how would i respond to 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 ronda if maybe jot your response down on a piece of paper if you want to get a little actual practice and so uh on on the count of one two three we'll continue it is well should i do it like that sure okay one two three so who do you want to go first Rhonda? you david <laughs> okay so you've 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 said all those things and and i'll just say hey Rhonda, i'll drink to that <laughs> <laughs> that's my pathetic attempt at humor let's let matt do, do a fantastic job oh Rhonda, guilty as charged i i, I frequently imbibe alcohol and Sometimes I overdo it, and and then and then my nose has these kind of ugly veins on it, and it's it's bulbous. It must be hard hard for you to look at at me at times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm so admiring your your honesty right now. Like a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't even say that to me, but uh-huh. you're 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 being truthful and honest, and I I just admire you for not only protecting yourself from my bad influence, but protecting, protecting other people around you. You wouldn't want to associate with me. And you're, you're right on. I, I have this kind of squeaky voice, but I'm really admiring your voice and, <laughs> and, your, and your haircut is extremely fashionable. It looks, looks so good on you. And you're, you're dressed in the most up-to-date uh, clothing. I'm really sad that, that we can't be, can't be friends because I I just admire you so much and I like you so much. <laughs> so what what grade are you going to give that, Rhonda <laughs> or or Matt? What grade do you give yourself? <laughs> I don't know. It's getting kind of silly. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of silly. But what what do you what do you think in terms of your technique? I, I'd say maybe a B or so. Mm-hmm. What, what what would you say, Rhonda? I mean, maybe I'm an overgrader, but I would give that an A. Mm -hmm. feeling empathy i'm really sad (laughs) stroking you know finding truth guilt is charged um thought empathy feeling empathy well um actually there was i didn't didn't do any any you didn't do an well you said i am feeling i am really sad we can't be friends not much feeling empathy um you didn't imagine how i was feeling okay so i'll give you a minus yeah, yeah. There wasn't a, the the I feel uh, was was weak, and the uh, feeling empathy was was weak, and that put it into the kind of a gamey, silly thing uh, a, 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 a little bit. How how how, how would you, um, you know, like to to add some I feel statements and and some and some feeling 
feeling empathy because if someone would say that that they're they're being pretty pretty outrageously nasty mm -hmm. and yeah. and what's one yeah, feeling feel again ashamed. That... yeah i feel i feel ashamed and really embarrassed to have let you down and you've talked this isn't the first time you've brought up my drinking and it, it's it's a real problem and and, and you're one of the few people who's honest with me about that and i really appreciate it rhonda uh, thank you so much uh, let's talk okay. about this this is important yeah, how, how about any feeling empathy? What's one feeling that no therapist in the United States has ever acknowledged? It might be angry. Yeah. I'm wondering if you're pissed off at me. I'm really feeling kind of put down right now and uh, kind of embarrassed and humiliated. And it's clear that I've, that I've, but, but I've let you down, but I had no idea that how enraged you were with, with, with me. And, uh, because I've all I've always kind of cared about you, but I think I've I failed you twice because I didn't even realize that you were this enraged with me. Uh, and I, can can you can you tell me more about things I've done or said that you know really hurt you, really angered you, or re really really ticked you off? You you mentioned my my nose and my skin and my haircut and 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 my drinking. But uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's anything else that's that you're. Maybe I've been insensitive, and you know, this. You know, I'm 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 ready to to, to listen. Uh, it's painful. I'm I'm very hurt by what you're saying, but I I see the truth in it. Tell 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 me more. I really want to hear what you have have to say. Mm. How's that? Uh, that really brought oh it. Oh my like god! That. Yeah. So, that just really opened it up. Yeah. Is yeah. that what you said, Matt? It, I thought it brought it home. Brought it home. Mm -hmm. Now we're now we're getting real. Mm -hmm. Not silly. Right. But um, and then why why is it hard for people to to do this again when someone's kind of ripping into you and that was kind of an over the top thing, but people do get get pissed off and. Uh, you, you, you know, I, you know, we read the feedback from people using the app and, and I, I get a lot of emails every day and, and, you know, I, I, I sometimes get pretty intensely hostile comments. Yeah. Uh, m most of them are just fantastic, you know, just wonderful, loving, grateful People ex express so much gratitude for this show and for you, Rhonda, and for you, Matt, and and for all the things we're doing for people for for free. And uh, uh, but but you know, I we we all get blasted uh, 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 a lot. And the way the world is right now, no matter you know what you're doing, there's going to be some huge number of people who who hate your guts. Right. And and why is is it so hard for us to respond with disarming and with I feel statements and and warmth and and, and stroking? I mean, there are a lot of reasons. There could be some self defeating beliefs about approval addiction or love addiction. We mm -hmm. we might feel an urge to attack back mm -hmm. um, and defend ourselves and mm -hmm. or right. or like I said earlier, just want to avoid it and run away. What do you think? Right. I have a question for you, Rhonda. Don't, don't I have a right to defend myself when people are dumping on me in this insensitive way? That's a really great question. I, I mean, um, you know, I'm a martial artist. I think you always have the right. And there's a this level of expectation to defend yourself. But oftentimes the strongest defense is to step aside and and um and look for the the common grounds and the ways that we can collaborate and create some peace out of the situation. Yeah, right. Do you want to finish the show with your, just your 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 story of what happened in Germany? Well, you know we're close to an hour in this show, so perhaps mm -hmm. we could do that another time with the other Ask David question. Sure, sure. That sounds good. Well, thank you, Matt and Rhonda. Uh, and all of all of you folks for for listening to our to our show today. Um, and I think if if you want to learn 
uh, the five secrets of effective communication and, and learn how to develop more loving relationships. And that's a big if because a lot of people, we, we all get in a position where we, we don't want to get close to people who were treating us poorly. And there's no rule that says you you have to. But if, if there are some people like we're going to do a, a, a Tuesday evening group and hope to turn it into a podcast on a woman whose heart is broken because of her relationship with, with, with her daughter, and we'll probably be getting into five secrets and the relationship journal and things of that nature. And if it's something you want to learn, you do have to to, to practice. And in, in the book, uh, Feeling Good Together, there's a lot of examples and exercises, written exercises you can do while while you're reading. Uh, I uh, and, and any other closing comments? I feel like I'm making kind of dull comments here. I thought you've blown us away again, David. Thank, thank you. Um, can't think of anything offhand. Really enjoyed being on on the podcast with both of you again. Yeah, this is really a fun kind of spontaneous podcast. I mean, not everyone in the world can take a class with you, David, for whatever reason, timing or money. But listening to these podcasts is a really incredible way of of learning with you. And everyone in the world does need to learn from you. Yeah. <laughs> and I really appreciate like you thanked me and Matt, and I I'm honored to anytime you do that. But you know, the real gratitude goes to you for creating these things and providing all of this free training to people. Yeah, and people do appreciate. I, I sent you guys an email I got earlier today from somebody who was listening to one of the early podcasts. And uh, he says, I'm way behind everyone. I guess he was up to number 66 or something like that. But he says, I'm, I listen to one every day and some of my listen to twice and it's been so helpful to me and thank you so much for for what you're doing and that that means that means a lot to me when you get a little older like the way i am you start to say ask yourself what's what what what's really meaningful to to me and certainly hanging out with you guys is is one of those things and then doing some something that someone who's listening to the show says hey that that's helpful i want to learn how to do that too that 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 has a lot of meaning as well feel the same way david me too okay well thank you matt and thank you david and to our listeners until we meet again thanks all righty bye-bye everybody this has been another episode of the feeling good podcast for more information visit dr burns website at feelinggood.com where you will find the show notes under the podcast page you will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists we welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.